after me as a father. All right. And they used to go to the temple and pray for me. Mm. The hardest man of all, Tony Tao, for me, he was the one that went straight to the temple and prayed for me and Reuben. All right. Uh, I met him the other night, and he's he's changed. He's he's not. I call him the Ice Man, but because he, he was always, it's almost like a James Bond sort of character, except he wasn't trying to be charming. But he was. He had a, a, a criminals would have been scared of him, intimidated by him. Okay. But he was a precise man and a, a brilliant policeman. All right. Great. Uh, and seeing him again, it was amazing. That is great. Well, let's take a break and we'll continue more with Phil Chernikovsky and his story. Welcome back to People. I'm Shirley Lin. Now, I've got Phil Chernikovsky here who has just recently came out with a book called Mountain of the Sleeping Moon. And uh, it's talking about his ordeal with searching for his son, Reuben who came 16 years ago to Taiwan, went mountain climbing by himself, and then disappeared. Well, Phil never found Ruben, but the thing is that he made a lot of friends here in Taiwan, including, including Zhou Dijiang, who is the Taiwanese diva of Taiwan in the Taiwanese language. And in fact, uh, the, the time that Phil is launching his new book, that Jody is going to be retiring from her singing. So Phil, when you first heard about this, how did you feel? When, uh, that Jody's retiring from oh, singing. Oh, right. My initial one was shock, but uh, I've, I rethought really about that. We should be celebrating somebody really unique. Let's savor the moment. Let's enjoy. She's still got another concert coming up, but even then, good on Jody. Good on her. She, she's, she's more than done enough for everybody, you know. Including you. Including me. And I'll tell you what, knowing, knowing her, Jody, I, I think retirement means she'll work just as hard and other things. I believe she's got these incredible skills and uh, just uh, she's charismatic, this woman. Mm -hmm. So she's, there's not going to be ever any, she's going to be busy, nonstop. Yeah, that is true. Um, do you know if you're going to be invited to her concert, her last concert, in I think in summer? In summer, yes. Well, I'd love to be invited to that, okay. uh, the concert. You know how people are scrambling for her tickets. To, yeah, well, I'm one of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm still, I still think, uh, you know, like I've been really honoured so mm. much from Jody. Yes. And her kindness for right. me. That I've got no, I've got no perceptions about being invited or not. Right. But if you ask me from my heart, wow, I'd love to go. <laughs> now this is the very first CD that you got from her, right? Yes. And it's actually all signature. Um, she's got an autograph and everything. Oops, it's falling apart. <laughs> oh, that's that's the second cover, but now that's falling apart. It's the apart. second one. It's falling apart too. Uh, yes. I remember the first one you had was all cracked. Yes. I can't put it back. I'm sorry. But anyway, so, and in fact, um, she, uh, you had your press conference with your book launch, and um, she couldn't be at the press conference, but the thing is that um, she wrote your card personally, so that's very nice of her. I'm sure um, they read it out to you. Yes? Uh, yes. I'm, gonna, um, I'm not going to read it now, but that's the card. I was very, How very, nice. I was very excited to actually receive that card. Yeah. And I, 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 once again, I had no perceptions because uh, I, I know what Jody, you know, like she's 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 got to analyze what she's doing from now on, you know. Yeah. And I don't want to put. I would hate to put pressure on a friend because I perceive her as a friend, mm -hmm. uh, and I wouldn't ask a friend to force himself to yeah. uh, to become an entertainer again by turning to a press conference. All right. Uh, I was I, I was touched by that. Mm. That that's that means more to me than you'd ever believe. Sure. Now I know that um, coming to Taiwan. I mean, first of all, you never heard of Taiwan before. You came, but after you've been here, you fall in love with the people, the place, and the food. I'm sure. Yes. yes. 
Now, now there's one point in the book where while doing your search, um, there's this uh, police officer who, um, you know, you guys would take a break from the search and then he got you something for you. When you opened it, you smelled it and you made a, made a face, but then afterwards you tasted it and you thought it was good. Do you remember what it was? Yes, I can tell. I still don't like the smell, but really? they, they taste delicious. And those are those uh, preserved eggs, I think they, they are. But honestly, like, um, yeah, I just thought, oh, no, this is, I'm definitely in the wrong place. Well, <laughs> here's two of these um, eggs for you. It's actually tea boiled eggs, tea right? Tea boiled eggs, yes. Yes, so they're not uh, aged or, like you said, preserved eggs, actually. It's really chicken egg, right? And then, um, and then they cook it in tea leaves, along with soy sauce, I think. Soy so, sauce, yeah. Yeah, mm. well, it might not smell as good, but it's tasty, right? Yeah, but now I, my perception is it's, it smells tasty. <laughs> oh, good, good. So well, now you've acquired a oh, taste, so this oh, will be for you. you. I, they won't last long. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have, you. you can have it right after the interview. But um, what other kind of food you thought was really strange and, but interesting, and you've acquired a taste for it? Um, right. When I, went to, uh, when I was in Chai, I sat around and there was a spinning table and all these dishes were put on it, ah. and there was soup, and it had lots of teeny shells in it as well, with a little shell food in it, but it was like a soup, and you had all these little side dishes, and and what happened was, if you know, like, I resisted, because yeah. I, I, that's the natural thing, I've never done this before, never tasted this before, but I tasted all these amazing different tastes, each, each little sample I had of all these different foods. Are you talking about sushi? Uh, no. Raw I, fish? No, no, no. This yeah? is, no, this is um, uh, a, a big bowl uh, that's got uh, food boiling in it. Okay. Soup. Uh, it's like a soup. Yeah. And then it's got all these little side dishes like there's different vegetables, uh, uh, tofus, and uh, maybe there might be some pork, uh, goose or okay. whatever you know but uh, everything was different and different sources so it's hot pot it was a hot pot and i'll tell you what after i've been around you know like at first i was apprehensive and i i was nibbling away but towards the end my you know i'm not really that great with the chopsticks my chopsticks couldn't ca keep up <laughs> <laughs> so they got me a spoon uh -huh. but I, I was determined to try and use a chopstick so it's just okay well that's good um, there's something interesting about the book, which I thought thought was sort of surreal. I mean, my time, my turn to say surreal, is how actually Ruben he drew a picture, um, a, a sketch at the age of seven, yes. and it had mountains and a teepee, and he was standing under the teepee, and there was a bird, maybe like an eagle or a hawk above the teepee, and then you, at first you were hesitant about showing it to the people here in Taiwan, who were you know, became your friends and also helped with the search and all that. But then when you did show it to a woman it was, she was shocked to say that that's the, what, what mountain was it? That was the- Tasan. Tasan? Tasan. Tasan. The Ali San. Right, Tasan, part of the Ali mountain. Was that shocking to you too, as much as it was shocking to her to discover the similarity between the mountain that Reuben drew at the age of seven and the real mountain that you guys were searching for Reuben? That's, that's exactly right. Um, and the, the other amazing thing, the clothes of the, uh, the man in it, uh, similar to American Indian, is the same clothes that the Joes people wear. And the dead tree of Ali San fell down the year that Reuben disappeared. So there's, uh, and that, that tree was a symbol and I got told by Paitsa, the Aboriginal woman, that um, she, the mountain in behind that picture mm -hmm. was Tarsan, uh, but it was the heaven side of Tarsan. If you went to the other side, it was hell. He had actually fallen into heaven. Uh, yeah, it's kind of beautiful and touching.
But when he told me, it, it was amazing. He actually said, Dad, you know, if I die, I, I hope that I don't get found for 500 years and I'd like to, I'd like to be in a place like this. He'd been looking at Maya, Maya books and Aztec National Geographics, I think it was, and he was sort of telling us this thing in the sweet innocence of a seven-year-old about if he was going to die. And when he disappeared in Taiwan, I looked at that picture and I, I you know, like, it, I had a gut feeling because he talked about going to these to these ancient people who lived in, in, the, in the forest. You had to go through a trail to get to their village. And it was past a thousand people's cave, this massive cave he was going to sleep under. So he described all these things. But Reuben being part Māori, this was an unbelievable bit, being part Māori, the Joe's people, their DNA is pretty close to the New Zealand Māori oh, really? DNA. So it was like Reuben went back to the land of his ancestors. That's the way you put it, Phil. Yeah, yeah. To comfort yourself. Yeah. But, but I think there's a lot of truth to it. Oh, I, We're I, all very much related. Yeah, you know, all the different, whether it's indigenous tribes in New Zealand or here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Polynesian people were... Polynesian. Yeah, Polynesian people uh, who originally come from Taiwan were probably the first of the great sailing nations of the world. They travel vast oceans all the way through the Pacific, all the way over into the Americas, uh, and particularly South America, but probably ended up in the north. They went to Africa as well. They were incredible sailing people, long before, you know, like uh, English and European history didn't exist when they were doing it. Mm. Uh, Chinese people basically stayed within their own lands and very, very, very rarely ventured out, except for one great emperor that, who was just All a right. great explorer. So, Phil, what, do you, what are your feelings after writing this book? Feelings and thoughts. Uh, feelings and thoughts. Uh, I, I think I'm more than, more than happy with what, when I saw the book, it's, it's you know, like in writing it, you know, I, I was worried about things were going to get missed out and, um, but now I'm aware, this is my message. This is, this is, this is me saying thank you. And, yeah, and with Jonas's help and with this wonderful publishing firm, Yuan, mm -hmm. this, this is what come about, you know, I, I, I you know, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm at peace. I. This is the biggest thank you I can do. All right. And I don't feel that I, I had to do it, but I wanted to. Yeah. And I think you did the right thing writing this book. You made us all realize, you know, what the story is. It's a beautiful story. And personally, I think it should be made into a movie. What do you think? I, I can't tell you too much, but there was once... Um, you're... you're <laughs> there, was, there was a hint of that once. There has been a hint of that. But um, especially after the book came yeah, out, yeah. But me, I'm more interested in the book. That's right. that's that's me, you know. Like, um, uh, yeah, it's just saying you, you're you really amazing people, uh -huh. you know, people of Taiwan. You're really amazing. And you ask me, I always keep on saying the word amazing, but I can't. I looked through the thesaurus and the dictionary, and I haven't come up with anything <laughs> <laughs> that sort of that fits me to say to you. Other yeah. than that. Well, it'll be great to have this movie. And then maybe the reason why Jody is retiring is so that she can be in a movie herself. <laughs> oh, if, if they'd be so lucky. No, I, I yeah, I, ju I just think, um, I, 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 my thoughts are not really on that. When you're over home in New Zealand, what do you think about, what do you miss about Taiwan? Well, I'll tell you what I miss. First of all, I'm, you know, like, and I, I'm really honest, I always miss my son. I always go to beneath. I go to the Joe's village beneath Tar Sand. Okay. And say hi, Reuben. You know that's just really important for me. But he is surrounded by 
24 amazing people in a, this beautiful mountain range. Mm. Uh, and he was a lover, a great lover of nature. So it's sort of like the right setting for him. But all these amazing people who I've got so many friends, it's unreal. It's like fitting time in, even after this, it's about fitting time in to go and see these friends. Mm -hmm. Like I've got friends in Pulley and I'm sort of doing a little bit of a tour now uh, and then hoping to end up, I, I hope this message gets out quick to Mr. Jen and Fong San to count the, uh, the Fong San chickens for the barbecue chicken that we're having on Saturday night. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like uh, I've got so many friends. And I come over here for friends. I, I do come over for the food because it's really unique. <laughs> you don't get anything like it in New Zealand. You, you get a, a few really good Cantonese cooks over there. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, really good. But you don't get anything quite as unique as what's in Taiwan. Uh, and it's the culture of the people. You, you hear... You, see people chatting, you see people laughing, and people are really friendly to me. Wherever I go, some people know who I am, some people don't. But always people offer to help me and in a friendly, warm way. Mm. And uh, they, they pass the language barrier to help me. Talking about that, um, seems like the very first phrase you learned after coming here was xie xie, means thank you. Thank you. Is that the very fir first phrase? That was, uh, right? It was. It was, or, the very, it was the very first. Um, ni hao, xie xie. Ni hao, xie xie. And then, um, and then you realize why everybody was calling you something. And so it turned out to be jia you, jia you, which means good luck, you know, like, I don't know, means add oil, I mean literal translation. We do make fun of it. We say it's add oil. And, and, uh, I got told that they were telling me to keep going, keep going with great spirit. Right, keep going. Yeah, it was, and I'll tell you what that was, it was a word of great impact to me. Every time I hear, heard it, it gave me spirit. And it gave you spirit to write this book. And it gave me spirit to write the book, yeah. And I'm glad you did. Initially, the name of the book was going to be Jio Jio, but then someone suggested it sounds too much like a sports arena <laughs> okay. thing. Okay. And, and we didn't want to turn into a sports magazine. <laughs> right, all right. Phil, it's so good to see you again. And Taiwan is always open to you. So come visit any time, any, 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 yeah, any time. And uh, who knows, bring your family, bring your friends. Let everybody know that Taiwan is, is not Thailand. <laughs> right, okay. Thank you, Phil. Thank you, thank you very, very much. much. Thank you for the book. It's beautiful. And thank you, Taiwan. And this, this, is, this is what I, I give to you as a reflection of your, your, your love that you showed me. Thank you, Phil. And thank you for watching, people. I'm Shirley Lin.